The information presented in this video is for general interest. Information presented about the subject matter should not be regarded as definitive. Hello, I'm Andreas and welcome to my short video about smoke alarms. Just a disclaimer, everything I tell you and describe is for general information only. It's all in an Australian context and I won't be demonstrating how to install an alarm or maintain it. So, let's get going. Here we have a smoke alarm of the type commonly installed in domestic dwellings. A photoelectric type, powered by the dwelling's mains power supply, which in most cases is 220 to 240 volts off your supply grid. This means the alarm is what we term hardwired. In this example, the alarm's power is tapped off the lighting circuit. In the same way as exhaust fans installed in enclosed toilets and laundries. And here's a view showing this alarm's power requirements and usage. This is called an information decal, or data plate. Let's do a field trip outside and check out the power supply and distribution cabinet. Here we see an array of circuit breakers protecting the various wiring circuits in the premises. And if we have a closer look here, there's a label attached advising that the hardwired smoke alarm is powered by the light circuit. Here's a view in the roof cavity. But what I now want to show you is this green light, or LED, which stands for Light Emitting Diode a type of light source that you can see here. You may not have paid much attention to it before because it doesn't always feature in any maintenance checklist. Generally speaking, hardwired smoke alarms have been mandatory Australia-wide in new dwellings built since the 1990s and the green LED is the means by which we can verify that the alarm is being powered correctly and compliantly. The problem is, if that green LED is not on, you should want to know why. It's there for a reason. It suggests there's something wrong in the dwelling's power supply, or maybe in the alarm itself, and this needs investigating. Of course, during brief grid power failures, such as blackouts during an extreme weather event, the backup battery will continue to power the alarm as intended. If I didn't see a green LED on, I'd certainly be taking an interest. Tenants living in rented premises also have a responsibility to check and test smoke alarms regularly according to the rules and contract of the tenancy. This includes reporting malfunctioning alarms to the property manager or landlord. However, at present, in the majority of states and territories, there is little to nothing mentioned about the green LED needing to be on at all times. But there is one exception. Here we have an extract from a most informative and easy to read publication where guidance about smoke alarm maintenance does mention the green LED. This document can be found on the website of Western Australia's Department of Fire and Emergency Services. Simply search under smoke alarms. Thanks for watching. Stay vigilant. Stay safe.